Klaus is attacking Lexnos with 100 barbarians and 100 archers at Town Hall 16. This is wild. This is absolutely wild. I am playing in a show match with all the top players across the world from all the best esports team, and it's to celebrate Carbon Finn's birthday. So let's dive into this. Let's kick off this show match, and hopefully, I can get in trouble today. Pete Castro is going to start us off today. Now, Pete Castro, fun fact, was able to get 17 out of 17 triples, a 100% hit rate in the path to be crowned world champion. So in all the circuits lead up to it, he didn't miss a single time, which is insane. And that was at Town Hall 15, which is a little bit easier than Town Hall 6, or no wait, not easier, more difficult than Town Hall 16. So on this one, he's just gonna be going in with a Lalo, a little bit of a Skelly Donut, takes out the most interior defense in the base there, but that leaves up two Ricochet Cannons and two Multi-Archer Towers, which I'm looking for right now. And not seeing. Am I missing them? Am I, am I missing the, the multi archer towers? I'm not blind, am I? I wonder if anybody out there is purposely not re or not merging their defenses to try to just have more defense on the base there in general instead of having a higher concentration of fewer defenses. I, I'm kind of curious what you guys think about that, but. I, I suppose there could potentially be a benefit to not merging defenses, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm honestly not sure. But the queen pops her ability down to the bottom side there and spawns three healers. He's got sneaky goblins that are going in to get the town hall in just a moment. There goes the first one. We'll defend, test for the traps there. Already cleared the way there, but the queen ends up surviving with those extra healers there. The healers die out, so that's not ideal. But he's got the Lalo still to go in afterwards, and his king was able to clear out that top side compartment. So sneaky goblins are able to secure the town take down. Queen ended up picking up the Diggy there, and that's one of the biggest advantages of the Diggy, is Diggy passes off to another hero. Like, the Spirit Fox is cool and all, but the Diggy, I mean, you can't, you can't just not bring the Diggy to a fight. He does get the defensive road champion to the right side of the base there, down. Slammer's gonna get burned up by the single Inferno unless he burns a freeze over there, but maybe he's got some troops in there that could go take out that section of the base. Looks like balloons and a Dragon Rider are gonna pop out of there. The Dragon Rider almost immediately gets locked into by the single Inferno, but he does get the red air bombs out of the core and freezes to save the Dragon Rider and is distracting the Eagle Artillery strikes there so doing some good work freeze the eagle freeze the multi in the right and the dragon will keep on working there looking really really clean here right now just gotta get through the multi more freezes go down for that gonna get the haste to get that multi down it's kind of getting skipped right now but all the red bombs being cleared to the core of the base there is a very very big deal here because that means the pack of balloons are gonna stay nice and healthy as he pushes his way through so just like in the world championship p castro is gonna get the opening triple for my team, or really, I guess our team captain when we do the uh, birthday war event is going to be Erica. But for this one, I'm on this team, and he's got the triple, and so we are going to start off strong. Let's see if they get the response now. Let's see if the other side roster can get a triple for themselves. We are live next one here, and we're doing this all in friendly challenges. So kind of an interesting format compared to our normal. But let's see what Philip can do as we go in with a couple of Super Dragons, E-Drags, and a bunch of balloons. Remember, Super Dragons, Electric Dragons, and Bloons all got new levels with the update. Looks like the e dragons are just going to go in with the Bat Spell and try to get the Molten Inferno down. If he can get these Mortars out of the way and get the chains directly onto the Eagle Artillery, then he effectively is going to wipe out everything in this area. How much can he chain through and get with this? Okay, oh my goodness, nice day right there. One shots the Inferno. And then we'll get the Eagle Artillery down. And then he actually just joins in with the Super Dragon. So that works out great. Very, very nice initial start here for Philip. And now we can push his way forward here. He's got a blimp. He can use the blimp to sail across there. And notice how everything is raged and there's no Rage Spell down. That's because he's got the Rage Gem on his Warden. I'm going to be running Rage Gem on my Warden as well. But I'm going to be breaking out my uh, Root Rider attack that I've been using in Legend League. And I feel like I can... Do some good work with that. Hopefully, I can't. Hopefully, I don't like one star or something like that. That'd be embarrassing. But uh, we will. We, we, we don't want to like uh, one star. We're on the same team as like Klaus and Picasso, right? That would be that would be really bad. But uh, he will sail across the base here. Get that town hall down with the balloons and the dragon rider. And it looks like his heroes up top there will coast away through the monolith right there. But the king gets locked onto by the monolith. He will freeze the monolith and pop the king ability. King has the giant glove right there. Look at that. The king does like a bunch of splash damage with that as well. But everything's kind of spread out here. So he's not really getting 
much for Splash. He's not really getting any additional targets, but he will just kind of naturally clear, clear ground skellies with that. So Super Dragon's out to left there. Continue to work at the, with the Warden. 50% extra damage output continuously all the way through the entire attack with Super Dragon attack. It makes sense because Super Dragon's are not going to get a massive benefit out of the Warden anyways. Remember the Warden Aura, the Life Gem from his uh, base equipment is only a, a 650 HP boost, but the Rage Gem at the level 15 gives like a 50% boost, or is it 45% boost to the damage all the way through the entire attack? So he makes quick work of that base there. Super Dragons get it done there with a very nice E-Drag trick. Let's see what Leo can do, because Leo is now, I guess, a member of Anarchia, formerly Class Champs, current World Champions. Let's see what he can do here. As he dives in with Super Barbarians, Root Riders, he's got double recall. All right, he's going to have some fun with this one. Let's see what he can do. I like it. I like it a lot here. I love when they throw in one Titan with the Root Riders. I think a Titan just kind of tossed in after you have a clean funnel there. We'll work. A, we'll do a lot of work there with a couple of Root Riders. Just the Root Riders do with, deal with most of the defenses. The... The... Electro Titan just kind of clears all the skeletons and helps deal with defensive heroes and clan castle troops there And then the Titan actually is able to stay pace with the Root Riders because they open up all the, all the walls But he just combs out the outside of the base there probably going for a flame flinger to go after the ricochet cannon and the Multi-inferno there, but I'm not sure if he can get the ricochet cannon down with the expo right there So we'll see what he decides to do with that flame flinger that he has not deployed yet up at the very top of the base He's actually gonna do a dual hero charge. He's got the warden gonna Take out the defensive queen. Is that Warden also running the Rage Aura? Yes, he is. Warden running Rage Aura. So he doesn't need extra healers. He's just able to boost the healing output. And he's able to get a big hero walk. And he takes out the defensive queen. Very, very clever right there. And that could be a very big part of the meta here. But the queen, still with another recall on standby. You gotta go ahead and take out the defensive king. And then with the limited amount of healers that she has, she could go ahead and recall out again and then redeploy and finally pull this warden into the fight. Or really, he's been in the fight the whole time. But he does go invisible to take the ricochet cannon off of the warden. And he will now march his way in. He's got the Rage Aura still active, but a Rage spell is still stronger than the Rage Aura. So it's still going to have a big benefit there. But he already used the ward ability. So that could be a problem. That could be a very, very big problem here. And I'm a little bit concerned right now, but the Electric Titan of the Queen quickly able to get the defensive clan castle. Troops mostly dealt with a couple more super minions firing away there, but he's advancing forward here. Got it under control. Slow march across the base here. Ice Golem on the outside. Ice Golem frees up and we'll get a couple of the defenses out there cleared. But he freezes the Town Hall, freezes the Monolith, and looks like the Flame Flinger. It came in late, but it is deployed down to the very bottom of the base here. And the World Champion is... Yet to be deployed. Super Barbarians working outside. RC deploys left side here with the Spirit Fox. And now we can make his way forward. No Diggy in sight for this attack. And so we got to keep a very close eye on what this monolith does. He's got an RC ability though. He does have the Rage Tower that activates now. Healers are moving over. I'm not sure if he's got this right now. RC gets locked onto, but she can disappear. She does disappear, but she's stuck on ground skills right now. Still has her ability to pop her ability very, very soon here. Need to pop it to get some HP recovered and get over to the... Monolith, okay, goes invisible again. That, that invisibility is actually doing some really, really important work there to protect him right now. But the hog is not going to do a lot right there because I guess it splits up the damage there from the multi-archer tower. Because remember, it'll attack either... If there's multiple targets, it'll attack all the targets up to three. But if there's only one target, it will go after that one specifically. But this one is looking to fall short here. I'm not even sure if it's a time fill or not. The Super Minions are basically all that's left. It is going to be a miss. That was honestly a very, very cool attack there from Leo. But now, Leo is going to receive an attack here. So let's dive in. And let's see what Gaku from Navi can do against his base here with Super Dragons. I would expect again to see the Rage Gem here. I think the Rage Gem... Like, I, I think there's a lot of cool equipment out there. But I think the Rage Gem... Kind of takes the cake there as one of the best in the game right now. Like, the giant gauntlet is really, really cool. And you guys definitely should try to push to, to pick up the giant gauntlet, even if you don't level it up right now. Because you can easily get enough of the sweet elixir from the event right now to unlock 
and uh, receive that giant gauntlet. And if you get it now, you won't have to pay for gems later on to pick it up there. So very, very important that you grab it now before it's gone. And so just go do the event there. However cheesy you need to do it, just grab all these elixir and make sure you get the event done. But it doesn't look like he actually has the Rage Warden or Rage Gem on his Warden here. Looks like he's actually running... Was he running the Healing Gem? It's kind of hard to sell, tell what equipment he has in the Warden. You know, actually, you know what? I can click on the Warden here and I can see that it was the Healing Gem and the Eternal Tome. So actually, he was running base equipment there. If you actually click on any of the heroes here, we can see that the King is running the Giant Gauntlet. And he's already got his Giant Gauntlet up to level 10 here. So maybe we can see something interesting out of that. Queen running base equipment here, but... Yeah, during a replay, we can just click on the hero card and we can actually see exactly what they're using. And maybe get an idea of how this attack is going to play out here. But the king pops his ability with that giant gauntlet. And he's got the he's got the rage vial paired with it. So he gets an enormous amount of damage right there. And also, it reduces the damage that he receives as well. But he's got a skeleton spell locking out that monolith right now. And he's looking very, very clean here. RC cut across here. RC running the diggy, which I definitely highly recommend. I think the diggy is very, very powerful and just has so much utility. But it looks like he's got an control here. He's got the triple and he's got the lead for our opponent's team. <laughs> but he's going to swag a couple spells on top of that. Easy day there for Gaku. I would say Damien's most recent major victory was winning the Snapdragon Pro Series with his team out in Seattle, which was awesome. I got to go out there to Seattle and uh, cast that with Bash. That was an amazing time there. Obviously a very talented player here. Let's see what we can do with the Lightning and the Lalo here. Go for the big kill squad. I haven't seen a lot of this attack here once we got to Town Hall 16, so I'm kind of curious if this one is still as strong as it was in the Town Hall 15 meta. But he's able to get the Skeleton Spell to disable the Monolith. The Monolith does have access right there with the King. The King is running, looks like Giant Gauntlet. So he can pop that King right there. He gets big, he gets he gets uh, ferocious. Obviously, he's going to go ahead and take that Monolith down there. And, I mean, the fact that the Giant Gauntlet is able to give the King damage reduction makes his life pool significantly more effective you know like i think it's like a what 15 percent damage reduction on top of everything else that it does so like that giant gauntlet is uh pretty insane there and i can i can understand why people are pushing that before the rage gem in situations where they they're going to use attacks there that don't really want the rage gem and a lalo you generally don't really need a rage gem to the lalo because the lalo tends to one shot pretty much every defense anyways Whenever the balloons reach their target, they're um, they're basically going to take it down. So it's not really uh, very necessary to run a Rage Gem in an attack like this. And so you actually do, in this case, since you can't run Apprentice Wardens, you actually do want the extra HP pool. And so the Life Gem and the Eternal Tome are still going to be your default Warden ability equipment so that you can make sure that you can actually survive and keep the balloons alive so they have the chance to go one shot the targets and survive through things like the town poison right here so i like that approach there and i guess if you're a lalo player then maybe the giant gauntlet is the best equipment to level up first but the hound crosses through right above that defensive queen you need to get the last four headhunters in there to go take her out and it looks like he's got the ricochet cannon that could snipe him off. Now he's safe to send it. As soon as the ricochet cannon goes down, he's cleared a path. He does get the headers in, and they all get sniped off. So that, that was short-lived here. He's got to get this defensive queen out of control. Okay, there's more headers right here. They, they arrived. They arrived. <laughs> I don't know where they were hiding initially. But he did lose all the balloons. Wait a second! Wait a second! The multi-archer tower! Hold of the line here! He's got this uh, fox here. Could that get through? No, maybe not. I don't know. I don't think it can. I think this is a defense. Yeah, he's out of troops. <laughs> oh no! Multi Archer Tower plus the Queen and Air Defense hold the line here. And it is going to be a hold. And that's not good for my team because that's our second miss. Leo missed. And now Damien missed. And they have triples across the board here so far. We got to get a defense right now. We got to stop the next attacker, which is looking to be. Rikirez from Tribe Gaming returning fire against Klaus. And fun fact, Rikirez was the highest hit rate player in 2023 as a whole by a significant margin. We still have my base, Klaus's base, and P. Castro's base on defense. If we can get some holds and then me and Klaus can triple, which I guarantee we will. I I hope I hopefully hopefully guarantee. Is that a is that a very uh guaranteed guaranteed i don't know but we're about to find out 
Let's see if we get the hold here. Klaus on defense. Rikiras will send in the next attack. It looks like he's got a Skelly Donut. And he will pair it with the new level of balloons for a Lalo. Let's see what kind of equipment he's got. Gonna run base equipment on the king. Base equipment on the queen. And he looks like he's got ba he's got base equipment on all the heroes here. So this is something that anybody out there can replicate. Maybe not at the same level as Rakiras because Rakiras is literally the best uh, Lalo player in the world. He was running over a 70% hit rate for the entirety of 2023. And there was no other player who even reached into the 70s last year. And so Rakiras has set himself apart there above everybody else in the world. But look at this. He's able to get that mortar down by striking the defense next to it. So nice little collateral pickup right there at the wizard tower. And he can just go in there with no extra distraction, no tanking. The Skelly Donut did have a mistake in it though. He did end up missing the left side multi inferno, but he got the other inferno that was behind the clan castle. So he tried for three targets there. He ended up with two, but it's okay. He can work with this. He just needs to make sure this town hall goes down. The king's on his way there. The queen gonna go in after the defensive queen, going for some wall breaks right there. Goes invisible to keep the wall breaker safe for a little bit longer. And that was a nice pickup right there because now the queen has access to that multi inferno, even if the king doesn't get there. She'll pop her ability and she'll step her way through and she will arrive to her targets and not only arriving to her targets but also breaking the ring of defenses in the process as she gets to these battle builders if she gets them she can get both of them that'd be ideal okay she gets one that's a partial break of the ring but it might be enough here king still work on the town hall uh oh battle builders try to save it oh come on get that town hall no he doesn't get it that, that i'm gonna sound happy because i am because Klaus is on my team and he just held that Town Hall takedown. But the Town Hall does quickly go down afterwards to the Road Champion happen to dive in after it. But now the Road Champion will cut across the base here with a dual raised up Expo on her. She's under a heavy amount of fire here and she's not going to last long. But he's still looking okay here. He can still pull this off. He's got Rocket Blues popping out of the Flame Flicker down south there. They will get in the Eagle Artillery. Multi Archer Tower it has a lot of work to do, but it only does like what a max level 120 damage on each of the different arrows there. So it can't stop that many balloons there. Nothing can stop Rikiris. Like he, he quickly made an adjustment there and made it for the town hall not going down. And he still claims to triple against Klaus. <laughs> I mean, that's just a, a Rikiris level Lalo, to say the least. But he's got another triple on the board here. And that means we are two stars behind. That means that right now we have to get two defenses and we have to get two triples and i guess we'll have to start right now but i'm breaking out the root riders i have the rage gem on my warden and we're live here we go here we go we're gonna carry this war we're gonna carry this war on our backs and we're gonna win we're gonna win come on klaus it's me and you it's me and klaus we have to save this war it's down to us <laughs> and here comes the Rear Riders. Let's go. Okay, headers for the defensive world champion. Let's get an early ward ability. And let's get into here. Let's get a heal on this side. Get the siege barracks down. Okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. We're good. Let's get a skeleton spell on the monolith. Okay, alright, alright, alright. Patience, patience, patience. Go. Here comes the clan castle pull. Looks like it's splitting. We're gonna put the poison over here. We're gonna put a heal on. Oh, let's put a skeleton spell onto this area over here. It's gonna heal up here. It's gonna freeze into that big block of defense right there. Gonna head on down for the defensive queen, and we'll put the road champion over to here. Okay, we got uh, we got everything moving. Everything's moving. We got the queen over to the far left side of the base. There we need headers for the defensive king. Let's go ahead and get the freeze on the town hall here in just a moment. Right uh, now. Oh. Queen? Ah, where's my queen going? Queen goes to building the outside of the base here. All right, come on. Go back, queen. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay, what do we do here? What do we do? What do we do? What's our answer? What's our answer? Um, freeze in the town hall? I'm gonna freeze in the town hall here. We can still maybe get this, I think. We got the road champion still alive. King's still alive. Come on, ground skelly stall me up here. Get the diggy to get the stun here soon. I'm gonna pop the RC ability here and get through a little bit faster. Come on, RC, get that stun. There we go, there we go. All right, King's still working. Come on, come on, come on. Get the town hall! No! 
Somebody take the town all to one star! <laughs> the town hall needed to go down with the queen. I think this big gap in the middle here, like there's like a big empty space right in this area that was devoid of any defenses and it just kind of made everything split around the core. They got a lot of the walls open that they needed to get open, but I need a lot more force going at the uh, town hall there. And I think I deployed too heavy on the Eagle artillery side of the base. Now it is time to see if my base can hold to a one star make up for my miss. He's also gonna run the Root Riders. Let's see what we can do here. Got a Spirit Fox. Here equipment is base on the King, base on the Queen. Running Rage Gem on the Warden. Only level 8 right there. Obviously, the Road Champion doesn't have any new equipment there, so she's just going to run base. All right, Fatal. Let's start off with the Flame Flieger over to the right side of the base here. Queen. Going to move in from the very bottom. Yeti down the line there. Maybe I, uh, I overestimated how strong that spam attack was, right? You think so? Like, I've been using it in Legend League and I'm having a ton of success with it. And I've been using it in Wars and having a ton of success with it. It's so simple to use, but like, apparently when the bases are significantly more leveled up there, then it does slow down significantly. But this attack is already off to a little bit of a rough start here. But a nice invisibility gets the Queen to redirect and circle back around to the multi Inferno, where she was about to walk north. But he did make everything invisible right there, Andy. Got her to go towards the town hall. Another wall break gets her to the town hall here. Flame Flinger up top is going to get the ricochet cannon and the scatter shot down in that compartment. So, really good value up there. Good protection for us, uh, Flame Flinger, and we'll just easily outrange those defenses while the Queen tanks the Expos. Here comes the Root Riders. He's got a Prentice Warden here. The Prentice Warden makes up for the the life gem not being in the uh warden's equipment and so you're able to get more hp out of the apprentice warden than the life gem would give so actually it's a it's better to just run the race gem if you're going to be running root riders in general but the queen engaging the monolith in the core of the base right now she still has the rage active she still has her ability still looking very very good a lava hound chasing his king down we'll go over there and intercept his uh, road champion very shortly out of the king dies out here, but until then, he's just mowing through defenses. He still has the ward ability. Why did he never pop it? I feel like he should pop it right now and try to survive to the back end, but he might be trying to swag it. You gotta be, you gotta be joking me. Flying flicker drops out, super means to the top of the base there. And yeah, it looks like he's gonna try to sway, straight up swag his grand warden ability. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Oh, man. I mean, I, I I missed, and then he triples me like this. Like, of all ways to get tripled, to get tripled with a swag ward ability, add the swag freeze, add the swag poison. Man, oh, man. But it's okay. It's okay. It's a show match. We're having some fun with it. And our next attacker is going to be Klaus. We have effectively lost his war. But the last attacker is are going to be Klaus attacking Lexnos and then Lexnos and oh my goodness what does Klaus have Klaus is attacking Lexnos with 100 barbarians and 100 archers at town hall 16 this is wild this is absolutely wild well, look at this. Uh, successful Skelly Dota takes out the Molten Inferno and gets the Race Tower activated and gets the Clan Castle and now here we go for the Barch Gonna go heavy on the top side there with the king. Or the bottom side, I mean, with the Rage Warden. Rage, let, let me see the defenses. Uh, oh, let me see what equipment he has here. He's got the Eternal Tome leveled up to 17. I think you get the next level, or the next uh, time adjustment on that at level 18 there. So he's very close to that. But running the Rage Gem on the Warden here to boost the damage of his heroes all the way through the base there. Obviously gonna be significant, but he also has the Giant Gauntlet on his king. And look at this, Giant King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a screenshot of that. I need a, a screenshot of the giant golem king that actually uh, looks insane with that skin right there. That's actually really fun. Um, but Klaus pushing his way through. Got to ground all the way around to the town hall here. He's got barbarians and archers moving across the top of the base there. And look at the very bottom of the base there. The defensive queen is getting burned up by the fire from the flame thinker. So he might actually get her down as collateral in that area. 
Well, he just attacks other buildings, but the Queen still has her ability intact. He's got his way into the monolith. He's able to take it down, and the Town Hall is activated there with Race Tower active, so he's going to be very, very careful. He freezes right there as well. Warning goes down. I don't know, Klaus. I don't know. He's got the RC ability. RC, RC, he already burned the RC ability, I mean. He's got to get the Queen ability to take the Town Hall, and the RC has to survive to make it through the, wrath, the last of the base here. But the Queen will pop her ability. She needs to get that uh, that Archer Tower down. The Multi-Arch Tower could mow down a lot of Barch here. Very, very rapidly, she locks on to it. Diggy takes the stun! And he's gonna get the Queen to survive! Here comes a Rocket Balloon and a Super Dragon out of the Flame Flinger. And I guess the Diggy's gonna go find a storage to attack here because he's got the triple! Klaus has done it! Klaus has done the impossible! He's tripled a Town Hall 16 with a Barch! You've got to be kidding me! Klaus is insane! Delivering time and time again with attacks that absolutely should not work, but apparently they can. Easy day. That's a hard one to follow up. Klaus is insane. But we have Lexnos now attacking P. Castro, the last base on defense, the last attacker to close out this show match, and I think they're going for a perfect war, right? I don't think, uh... I don't think Team Finn has missed a single time there. Like, uh, let's see, who all attacked there that hasn't been locked? Recurious and Fatal, they both tripled. So yeah, yeah, they're going for a perfect war right now. So even though Klaus was able to deliver for the second triple for our team, the rest of us kind of threw, the other team has five players who were absolutely rocking it here. And I guess our, we just had our star players uh, get in there and deliver, right? But looks like Lexnos, Able to just wrap his way into the scatter shot. No threat to his healers right now, and he will get the expos down. The rage tower has not activated yet, so looking nice and healthy right there. Key over to the side, and we'll try to set up the root riders. It is an anti two star bait, so we gotta be careful here. We gotta make sure that we don't accidentally miss the town hall takedown. I almost missed a town hall, so that'd be funny if uh, Lexnos won stars and I, I did better than him, right? Oh man, that'd be good. That'd be good. That'd make me smile. That'd make me smile like ear to ear. Like, see the smile? That's how I'd smile if he one starred right now. That That's that's an impressive smile right there, you know? That's that's like contagious kind of smile right there. And I, I kind of want that to happen. But look at this. The wall breakers can't even open up these Town Hall 16 walls because he doesn't have the next level yet. So he has to burn two of them to get through that wall. And the Queen has slowed down a bit here. Halfway mark of the attack here. And now the Queen marches in to danger. Here we go. Sweeper knocking their healers back. Got some invisibility. Probably gonna burn some invisibility here. Eagle Artillery Strikes incoming. Lots of damage. Here we go. Let's pick it up. Step his way to the Town Hall. Minute and 15 on the clock. He's got to move it. He's got to move in the next phase here. Like now, he's got to get moving and he can't take his concentration off of the queen. And healers are getting targeted by the multi arch tower on the left side. So they're in danger. Can't even click on him there. I can't click that multi arch tower. I'm trying to click on it. It won't let me click on it. <laughs> oh, there we go. The king is standing on it. All right. Sorry. I got distracted. Queen was able to secure the tower takedown. But the Queen is still in a lot of uh, danger right now. And the multi arch tower and the monolith will take her down. 45 seconds. What was my score? My score was uh, something. I gotta go back and look at my score there. I gotta, I gotta see if I can at least uh, get a higher percent than Lexnos if he doesn't make it through. Because right now, I don't think he has the time to make it through. Like, he spent so much time in the Queen Charge, and the Root Riders are taking the scenic route to get through these defenses. He'll rage up. He's got the Rage Warden R as well. I thought he had the uh, base equipment there. No, he's got the Rage Warden. The, the Rage Gem on his Warden right there, so he's able to get a little extra out of that. But 15 seconds. I don't think he hits the percentage that ends up passing up my attack. I think I think we... Okay, you ready for the smile? This is the smile of a YouTuber versus YouTuber duel in which I was able to take the top side there. 78%, what was mine? Mine was a 86%. I am I am 7% better than Lexnos today. See, that's the smile we're looking for. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video.